What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode. Wrong gear, but nonetheless, what's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And we got an update. One of the players that I talked about earlier that I was surprised was not signed has officially been signed. So we're going to get into it and talk about it right after our intro. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So comes down and had word had just come out that DeAndre Ayton has signed an offer sheet with the Indiana Pacers, a Bulls in division rival. And so that's one of the reasons I'm covering this as well. Since I talked about it earlier, he assigned a four year, $133 million maximum offer sheet with the Indiana Pacers. Um, this is this is one of the last big dominoes to fall. I know, you know, people are still questioning what's going on with Kevin Durant. Colin Sexton, who I talked about earlier, is I think a pretty big domino or could be. It's just that he's injured and may not play very much this season. But the the Pacers, I'm sorry, the Phoenix Suns now have 48 hours to decide if they're going to match that offer sheet or not. So now we know it can the trade speculation, everything can stop. It's going to be one of two teams that he ends up with. It's going to be the Phoenix Suns or it's going to be the Indiana Pacers. It's going to be interesting to see what the Phoenix Suns do in this case. Now, this is less than the max that he would have signed had he just re-signed outright with the Phoenix Suns, so they may look at this and say, hey, this is a win, let's go ahead and match this offer, and then if we need to trade him down the line, we can, rather than lose DeAndre Ayton for nothing. And I know some people are going to say in the comments, well, what about the chances of a sign-in trade? Now, keep in mind, sign-in trade, after the offer sheet, they could t- technically still convert it to a sign-in trade, but it would still go to that half base-level compensation, so half of his initial uh, salary would only count towards any type of matching types deals. So we could very well see this turn into, and the Phoenix Suns say, hey, it's better now at this point to maybe get Miles Turner or somebody back for uh, DeAndre Ayton so that we're not losing everything and turn it into something. This very well could be the Pacers as well. We know that it had been speculated that the Pacers may have been in trade talks with the Phoenix Suns. The Pacers may have signed them to this offer sheet to force the Phoenix Suns' hands to go ahead and say, hey, what are you going to do with this with this sign and trade offer that we have now? So, yes, even though he signed an offer sheet, it still can be converted to a sign and trade after the fact. And we'll see what happens with that. But it's only going to be one of two teams at this point now. He's either going to be with the Indiana Pacers, our in-division rival, which, how much are they going to really challenge us? Or they're going to, uh, or he's going to be a Phoenix Sun. What do you guys think the Phoenix Suns are going to do? I personally think the Phoenix Suns are going to match it. It would make the most sense. Like I said, even if they do want to eventually trade him, they can. Um, Then they wouldn't have to worry about the base level compensation type thing if they do decide to trade him later down the road. So they could do something like that. But when it's all said and done, um, like I said, if I was the Phoenix Suns, I would match. It's better than losing him for nothing or try to push that sign and trade. But then, like I said before, that can get kind of difficult with the base level compensation rule for the uh, for the Phoenix Suns to really match or they have to may throw in too much there. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this how this all plays out. This is like I said, this is the last kind of major, major chip to fall. We got some other marquee free agents out there, but this DeAndre Ayton thing was really the last thing. And I had speculated before, where are they going to where's this thing going to wait until there's a resolution with the Kevin Durant deal? No. And what this also does now, this basically says that. A Kevin Durant to Phoenix Suns deal is not going to happen. Now, we did get some speculation earlier in the day as well that there are other teams uh, now maybe interested that even the Pelicans may have offered a package around Brandon Ingram for Kevin Durant. Now, we'll see if that ends up being the case. But, um, you know, maybe this is a sign of things like that going. It's <laughs> This is, hey, shout out. Who would have thought? that this is how this would have turned out with the Phoenix Suns and DeAndre Ayton at the end of last season, considering how good the Phoenix Suns looked last season, the fact that they were building. This is this is why in the NBA, you never know. You can be one of those teams that are at the top, and then you can immediately go to where you're not necessarily in a rebuild, but where you're considering and maybe losing one of the bigger pieces to your team. But let me know what you guys think about everything down below. Do you think the Phoenix Suns match this deal? Do you think they work it into a sign and trade or – do you think they just go ahead and, and let him walk for nothing? Let me know what you guys think about that down below. Again, thank you for tuning into the show. Make sure you're following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. And lastly, if you want to leave a text and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. Thank you for tuning in. Like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. 
This has been a presentation of The Break Media. Media.